The lungs occupy the large majority of the thoracic cavity, except for the mediastinum, which is where the heart is located. The root of the lungs is where the vascular and bronchial attachment is to the mediastinum. The costal surface is referring to the ribs, and it's the anterior, the lateral, and also the posterior surfaces. Then the apex is the superior tip, the region that is just deep to our clavicle. And within this specific region, the apex is where the, a the vagus nerve passes by the apex. And the vagus nerve is very significant because it's a parasympathetic nerve. So it's going to have an effect on what the bronchioles do. So the base of the lungs is the inferior surface that rests on the diaphragm. The hilum is found at the mediastinal surface. And it's significant because it's the site for entry and exit of the blood vessels, the bronchi, the lymphatic vessels, as well as the nerves. And the region at the base where the diaphragm is located, the action of the diaphragm is significant. It's the most significant muscle with inspiration because it increases the diameter of the thoracic cage. And again, remember the mediastinal surface is what comes into contact with the heart. So the left lung is separated into the superior and inferior lobes by the oblique fissure. This is uh, different than the right side of the lungs because of the heart. So on the left side, the, the cardiac notch is the concave surface where the heart fits into. So the right lung then has three lobes, the superior, middle, and inferior lung. And the region that supplies the diaphragm is the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve is the major nerve that comes out of the cervical plexus, which is C3 to C5. So our next diagram shows us this anatomical relationship of the organs in the thoracic cavity. So we can see again on the right side of the lungs there are three lobes. There's the right superior lobe, the right middle lobe, and then the right inferior lobe. On the left side of the lungs we see the left superior lobe and the left inferior lobe. And again the cardiac notch is where the heart fits kind of into the lung area. And again, we know that the lungs are going to sit directly on the diaphragm at the base of the lungs. So the other anatomical region relationships of these organs in the thoracic cavity are shown in this slide. And this is a great view of the lungs. It's a transverse section. And we see here the anterior region where the sternum is found, the posterior region. So we have an incorrect perspective. So on the outside of the lung specifically are the pleura. And the pleura are very significant because they ensure that there is a frictionless environment for the lungs to inspire and expire, to breathe in and breathe out. And uh, notice here for some of the anatomy on the right side of your diagram that the left pulmonary vein specifically is going to be the most anterior structure that's present in this region called the hilum. And again, we can see this is the anterior surface, which is at the bottom of your diagram. So the blood supply and the innervation of the lungs is on this slide. And it's important to remember that there are two different circulations for the lungs. There's the pulmonary circulation, and this circulation has the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins, which you learned about in the cardiovascular system. The pulmonary arteries, remember, are going to have venous blood. It's one of the only examples in the body where there's venous blood. And that's coming from the right side of the heart, picking up oxygen at the pulmonary capillary network. And these capillaries are present in the connective tissue, 
that's located between the alveoli. Then the pulmonary veins are going to be returning oxygenated blood now back to the left side of the heart for delivery to the entire system. So the second of these circulations is the bronchial circulation. Because the bronchi have to receive oxygen as well, the lung tissue needs to be oxygenated. So the um, bronchial arteries arise from the aorta and enter the lungs at the hilum. And the innervation of these lungs, this is very important because the parasympathetic fibers, they cause bronchoconstriction. And this is from acetylcholine from the vagus nerve. Whereas the sympathetic fibers are going to cause bronchodilation. That would be epinephrine. And the example of an EpiPen causes bronchodilation. So somebody having an allergic attack, for example, can then breathe. So the pleura that we looked at earlier in the diagram is this thin double layered serosal membrane. So it's a wet membrane that divides the thoracic cavity into two compartments. The pleural, the parietal pleura is going to be the more superficial membrane. And the visceral pleura is the membrane that is directly on the external surface of the lungs. And so the reason that this is so important is it allows the, the lungs to glide over the thoracic wall during breathing. And again, we see this on the same diagram, which you have already seen. And so again, remember the relationship of the parietal pleura to the visceral pleura. The parietal pleura is superficial. It's touching in contact with the ribs. The visceral pleura is deeper. It directly in contact with the lungs themselves. And this space is the pleural cavity space that is formed because of these membranes. So when there's problems with this specific region, pleurisy can happen. Pleurisy is inflammation of the pleura. It can result in pneumonia and inflamed pleura become rough, resulting in friction, stabbing pain with each breath. So the um, job of these membranes is to provide a frictionless movement, so for inspiration and expiration.